as in the training is that difficult because it has to be mm. so difficult and I don't know whether it's changed it's, it feels like it's changed a little bit now like it's softened like how you can speak to oh, individuals yeah. or maybe or not has it I don't know <sighs> I've heard stories um, but like there's always ways of getting around it Cause, well the, the the thing is the to keep in mind the final tests haven't changed so you know as long as they don't change and that kind of remains you know what you have to do on the final kind of field exercises or low standards if as long as they don't change kind of because that that's the test like if you can pass that you're good enough mm. so kind of what happens in the in between if they want to change it because when i went through training people have been through sort of 10 15 20 years before were always saying to me, ah, oh, you know, you've got it easy now. Like it's it's a lot softer, but you know, the corporals always find ways of you know, oh, of course, you around. Like, they have to though, don't yeah, they? Like, yeah, they have yeah. to because it was like you know, you can't deprive the lads of sleep, but what you can do is a kit pile. So what they used to do, like if we'd messed up, or sometimes even if we hadn't messed up, just you know, for for fun, it felt like. Um, but you'd have to get every single item of clothing, and because the way the accommodation was, it's like this spiral staircase that goes up. And it'd be a kit pile, so and all your runes are kind of around it. So one by one, you just have to get every item of your clothing, throw it down, throw water on it. And you do that, and you know this pile of clothing and kit would be up, you know, two stories high by the end of it. And then they'd kind of just be like at the end of it. Well, now you need to basically wash all your kit, and we were hand washing our kit at this point. Wash all your kit, ready for inspection tomorrow. And it's like six o'clock in the evening, so you're like, right, you know, you're not getting sleep that night then. And then you're turning up the next day to your drill inspection or whatever, and you fail that miserably, and then you get smashed by the drill instructor, and it just snowballs from there. Mm. So, yeah, to, as I said I thankfully not having to go through the whole process again, so I couldn't do a comparison. But like I said, as long as those final tests remain the same, then it still should be in good stead. You know, like the, the old things you see around interrogation and the waterboarding and all these things. I don't know how much you can share. You can just say, look, mm. you know, you don't don't want to share any of that information. But is that still a part of it? I know they used to do that back in the 80s, 90s. Because well, that's the next phase. So when you okay. finish the jungle and you pass that, then you kind of go on to I thought we were done. I, mean, I no, thought we no. were done. Sorry no, to keep going there. At this then. point, you're, about, you're not at the halfway point yet. Um, so, yeah, that's the next phase. And it's... So you're yeah. in, is, it, is this in the jungle? So you pass the jungle? Back home now, okay. back in the UK. Any and, time um, off? No, so the whole six months you don't get any time off. Um, it's Yeah, it's... I mean, you get sort of the odd sort of bits of weekend or weekend, but generally speaking, it's six months on, on selection pretty much. Um, I mean, I'd, I'd say the, that phase of it, the you know, survival interrogation phase is by far the the least most unenjoyable part of selection it's because you know with the hills there's you know you get a bit of time to yourself and you complete a march you feel kind of good you know it's been a hard fist session so all the endorphins are in so you kind it's of physical yeah it's physical and you feel good even in the jungle as horrendous as it is you know you're still doing a lot of soldiering and you know if you like soldiering which i did there's there are bits to enjoy the survival phase is just absolutely miserable. Um, you know, you're up in Scotland, it's winter, wearing, you know, just military uniform. You've got no real warm kit and like a day's, half a day's ration to sustain you over, you know, the distance that you need to travel over five or six days. I think you're on the run. Um, yeah, up in Scotland, it's pouring down with rain. And like I remember one night, we eventually just had to stop because we were just, you know, absolutely exhausted, freezing cold, just lying on this forest floor. And me and one of my mates just spooning each other, trying to trying to maintain a bit of body heat on the, you know, all the roots on the ground. And you don't really sleep, um, you know, turning over every 20 minutes to, you know, warm your back up a bit more. <laughs> you just look pathetic, you know, you're just absolutely broken. And then you do that bit. And you're getting hunted down by, hunted down by sort of hunter force, you know, dogs. They're generally like paras and marines looking for you. And you definitely don't want to get captured. We didn't. But that sounds incredibly unenjoyable. And well, you eventually get to the end and everyone gets captured anyway. And then you go into, yeah, 36 hours of interrogation, which, again, you get into that and you're kind of just wishing you're on the run again by, by that point. Because that's, you know, that's, and it's, like the the program SAS Who Dares Wins kind of, you know, it does 
give a good idea, albeit on a much smaller scale, of what it's like. You're in the stress position room with the white noise being played, and and for us, it was like, what was the white noise? It was like these three violins, all out of key, all out of time, um, but then played backwards on a 15 second loop or 10 15 second loop and just constantly and you know you're in that room for you know upwards of five hours sometimes Jesus. just in stress positions and you, you you kind of start to lose track of reality because you, you don't really know when you're awake and when you're asleep kind of thing like mm. one time i thought i was somewhere else just having a dream and then kind of just woke up i just passed out on the floor and one of the guards was sort of just picking me up and putting me back into place, you know, back into the stress positions and... Isn't that a good place to be though? Because of, otherwise you're out. Because oh, yeah, if you're yeah. lucid, you're tapping out, right? But if you're in that in that kind of space of... I, I, I certainly wouldn't say it was a good place to be, but <laughs> <laughs> I definitely don't miss it. <laughs> mm. But yeah, like, certainly by that point, yeah. Yeah, you definitely don't want to fail. And then another time they started cooking bacon. And because you're starving at this point, you you know, you're so hungry. Um, they start cooking bacon and the smell coming in. Because you can't see a thing. You know, you've got the, you've got some bag over your head and then you've got goggles over the front. Or is it just the goggles? It's, you can't see a thing. They've got tape all around the goggles. So there's literally no light coming in. So you have no real concept of even where you are. And yeah, they started cooking bacon. And the smell was getting stronger and stronger and you're getting hungrier and hungrier and you start to hear the noise of people like chatting away and laughing and stuff and the noise was just getting louder and louder. I think, oh, maybe maybe this is just part of the exercise where they give us bacon sandwiches and they've forgotten about me. You know, and you know, this the sound of laughing was just getting louder and louder to the point where I couldn't take it anymore. So ripped the goggles off and kind of like as soon as that happened, all this, like, the sound of the chatting sort of went away and it's just back into the room, The these violins playing, and then just looked around, it's just like cold concrete floor with everyone spaced in boiler suits, you know, perfectly sort of two metres apart from each other in the stress positions. And, you know, there's no bacon anywhere. <laughs> sort of just looked around and, you know, someone just came back and put the hood back on and I was like, well, you know, as long as no one else is getting bacon sandwiches. You know? <laughs> And then, yeah, you kind of get to the end of that and eventually it comes to an end. And How long is this process? This That's about a week in total, I think. I can't remember the exact time, but yeah, you're pretty, you're in a daze by the end of that. Um, but kind of at that point, you ain't quitting. Like there's absolutely no way you're quitting with everything you've already gone through. Um, yeah, and yeah, it ends and yeah, you go on to the, and that's kind of the, that first kind of half of the course is where, you know, the majority of people drop out. After that, it does go into more of a, more training. Like and conditioning, a, a I suppose. Of, yeah, you do, yeah, all the other things. And yeah, after six months, you know, the majority of people are then successful and then you go off to, to, your, to your squadrons and your respective units. So on that interrogation in Scotland, is that where it happens after... Is that the last bit? Is that the the, the last for that the stop for that like what for point? that phase? Yeah, for that yeah. phase. So you yeah. finish that phase. So we're not finished yet, no. No, no. no there's no. still about another three months of just okay. various other things that you'll get taught. Um, yeah. So before you you get told you're in the SBS or SS, you've still got the training to go through. So there's still yeah, a long yeah. part. Let's keep going. And then, well, yeah, you sort of you get to the end of that, and then you got continuation training, kind of after that as well so i mean selection is kind of what it kind of says on the tin it is selecting the individual it doesn't you know you're not even at the end of selection you're not fully ready to reintegrate with a squadron or integrate with a with a squadron so you go into kind of continuation training you do stuff with vehicles with with boats um you know obviously being in the sbs you have to do some boaty stuff mm -hmm. um so yeah the, the boat course is one of the things you do and you know that's you think at the end of selection you're like oh that's all the hard work done now and yeah it's not you get you get that boat course is tough as well when you're you know you're paddling with the clapper canoes um you're in sort of two-man teams um and you got a buddy with that and i was paired up with a guy in the marines um but he, he, he was about 10 12 years in so it was great because you know i had a lot of experience and you know real nice guy you know we'd be doing some of these paddles sometimes 
however long they were you'd be hanging out be freezing you know your hands would just be you know again just piss went through hands cold and suddenly i'd be at the front and some of the you know power behind was waiting i'd turn around and he was phone to his fiance it's just like message oh yeah out paddling still shit uh, you know whatever he was saying i don't know like, Oi, get, back, get back in you and then um but yeah kind of at the at the end of the boat course well towards the end um we're doing some some surf drills um is what they call it it's on the medium inflatable boats um so like eight man boats you know the inflatable ones they got two engines on the back and just practicing for you know going in and out of shore sort of in in rough seas and the sea state was you know it was pretty rough it was on limits um to what you know you can safely do in training but it was on the limit so they decided to train and yeah we're going out and yeah it was like real tough going to get out because you know these boats fully laden which they were it's like it's a tough 12 man lift you know and you just getting chucked about by the waves like whereabouts sort of... are you in the world this... oh this is in the uk now oh this is yeah, in the uk this is in the uk um, but the seas are still rough oh yeah well today it was anyway well, that day it was anyway um and yeah so the you know the waves were coming in and trying to get out and so the coxswain who was in charge of the boat was really having to put the revs on to get over these waves and as we're going up it was almost the boat was almost going vertically up kind of like that and sort of fall back down on the tail end and slam back down and you know it was, it was exciting but you know you're still you're still i remember feeling like pretty scared at the time because you know you'd never done anything like that before and it was all new and but as the boat was going up it was the tail end was going back into the water and it was slowly drowning the engines out so eventually one engine sort of cut out and and that was gone and you know managed to get over the next wave and then the second engine drowned out and you know at that point you're fucked mm. <laughs> so I saw another wave coming and the boat goes broadside onto it so it's just well you know what's coming at that point and you know you call a brace 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 and yes yeah, wave just flipped us like it was a box of matches and you all get flung out and come back up swim back to the boat start numbering off you know, one okay, two okay, three okay, four okay, five okay. And you sort of looking around because there's six of us on the boat and looking around, see some at the tail end where the engines are, start to see some splashing and sort of get over to it. And it's my, my clapper partner, Woody. Yeah, we eventually got him back. Another team sort of took him away to start giving him first aid, and our ambulance eventually came in and, and took him away. And yeah, we were told sort of not too soon after that that he, he drowned. Um, Holy shit! And um, yeah, what can you do? <laughs> Fucking hell! And yeah, it was kind of like the next day was all the police inquiries and stuff, and then it was just back to work. Um, obviously, we had his funeral, which was which was tough. Um, certainly tough on the family, you know. He had his his mum, his dad, his fiance and brother, and then all the close friends and of course they all want to know and they have a right to know kind of what happened um so you tell them but yeah certainly <sighs> wasn't um certainly I, I wasn't, wasn't yeah sorry I, I i i don't know what to say i mean no and, I mean, and, and that's it's, when it's tough you know it's, <sighs> but it's and this is in training right well yeah and that's it's, it's kind of just the nature of the beast you know if you want to be part of a team like that that's going away to do you can't train in perfect conditions because chances are the operations aren't going to be in perfect conditions um and you know throughout my career i think certainly the time i was in there was more more injuries and 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 deaths in, in training than there was on on operations and you know it's a it's a bit of pill to swallow don't get me wrong but it, it, it kind of has to be that way because of the job yeah yeah that is needed it's yeah, not exactly yeah, you've got to go and, and this comes down to again i don't even know how I, I carry on talking about what i've heard or what i've seen but the best of the best are the ses and the sbs and from what i've seen or heard it's because the training in which they do puts yourself in that position that it's seamless when you get it as seamless as it can be when mm -hmm. you get into a war zone yeah well, I mean, yeah, as soon as you they say no plan survives first contact, you know, as soon as you get on the ground, it's, you know, nothing like you expected, like rarely ever. And, you know, there's always, there's so many factors outside of your control that you've, you know, you can't plan for. And, you know, to an extent, a lot of it's the unknown. 
um, and you just kind of have to deal with it, you know, as and when, you know, these situations present themselves.